So, happy to say once again, today uh, my friend Bhakti Bethwell is here. So, give me a chance to speak a little bit about Krishna, so you can say hello to everyone, please. Bhakti Bethwell. Hello to everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Very good, thank you. <coughs> Offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, who with the torch light of knowledge has opened my eyes, which were blinded by the darkness of ignorance. Namaste, Shlubhakti Vidai, Gorbanyai, Shmurti Vidai, Prema Bhakti, Rasambhade, Paramjai, Prabhavai, Namaha, Namam Vishnu Pray. Krishna Prashtai Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Virandha Shamini Timamni Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurani Vicharani Nivashe Shishunivari Pashtata Deshi Dharani Nama Vishnu Pray Radhika Priyatni Shri Shri Mad Bhakti Virandha Narayani Timamni Shri Shri Devi Goswami Raja Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Siddhanda Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai so we're reading from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 14, The Three Binding Forces of Material Nature. The Master of All Masters then spoke, I shall instruct you once more in the most sublime doctrines of ancient wisdom, mastering which the learned philosophers <coughs> have achieved the pinnacle of perfection in their pursuit of transcendence. Protected by this perfect understanding, the wise perceive their qualitative oneness with me and attain that region which lies beyond the perpetual cycle of creation and annihilation. All sentient beings develop from embryos within the womb of material nature, having been placed there as seeds by me, my dear Arjuna. I am the Supreme Father who plants the living seeds within the fertile womb of Mother Nature, allowing for the birth of all the varied forms of creatures. The eternally living spiritual persons, although unchangeable, having come to inhabit, inhabit bodies composed of mundane substance, appear to be transformed by the modulations of the three binding forces of that substance. The harmonizing force of goodness, the energizing force of passion, and the darkening force which exercises an inertial effect. Those persons who are more influenced by goodness become bound by attachment to the feelings of happiness which this harmonizing force produces. By comparison to the others, this mode may be seen as free from taint, O pure-hearted Arjuna. You should understand that the principle of mundane attraction, born of the energizing mode of nature, gives rise to passionate endeavor, which in turn leads one to be bound by attachment to the fruits gained by one's efforts. All embodied persons are subject to the inebriating effects of contact with the darkening force, and as a result of such connection, misunderstanding, inertia, and excessive sleep, which cover one in nations, arise. Actions performed with good motives are productive of real happiness, whereas actions based on selfish ambition bind one to the fruits. Under the spell of darkness, the natural wisdom of the soul becomes clouded over, and various forms of insanity are manifested. Every person is influenced by different mixtures of purity, passion, and darkness. For some time, purity remains in the ascendancy over passion and darkness. Then again, <coughs> passion will rise and become prevalent, and in due course, darkness will overshadow both purity and passion. When the sensory gates are opened and filled with light and mental insight has become sharp and clear, the innate goodness of the living soul may be sensed. As the influence of passion increases, there arises a tendency towards gluttony, a voracious appetite to enjoy the things of the world, and self-centered ambition becomes the motivation for all action. O favorite child of the family of Kuru, as darkness ascends, consciousness dwindles, inertia takes hold, symptoms of neurosis are seen, and a person becomes increasingly bewildered by illusion. Those persons who begin the journey which commences upon the leaving of their bodies after having become established in pure goodness gain entrance to those immaculate regions inhabited by the seers of the truth. Those who leave their bodies while under the dominance of passion 
take rebirth in the human civilization amongst the fruit of workers, whereas those who depart will, under a predominant influence of darkness, enter thereafter the wombs of the most ignorant of creatures. By carrying out good works in the spirit of service to others, the soul becomes purified of all contaminations, whereas by acting under the impulse of selfish desires, only suffering results. To act under the spell of darkness binds on to a life of ignorance. Wisdom is born through the agency of the harmonizing force. Insatiable desire arises from the impassioning force, and insanity, confusion, and ignorance develop by the effect of the darkening force. Those affected by the harmonizing force of goodness evolve upwards and taste paradise. Those on the influence of the impassioning force remain struggling within the human society, whilst those heavily affected by the darkening force on account of the abominable nature of their activities may find their consciousness constricted within the bodies of animals. Those who are able to see clearly come to understand the workings of these forces, and they see all mundane causes and effects as functions of the interactions. Through culture of such clear vision, they become transcendental to all mundane influences and enter their eternal homeland, the sacred realm of the Supreme Divine Person. If the effects of these three forces can be overcome, it is possible for a person to gain complete freedom from all of the miseries of material existence <coughs> and to relish the ambrosia of life everlasting, even while within the body. Arjuna then inquired, O oh, my dearest Master, how may I come to ascertain which souls have overcome the influence of all the forces of mundane nature? What sort of character will they display, and how is it that they become established in such transcendence? <coughs> the kind and gentle Lord then replied, Those who are fixed in transcendence sit as impartial observers, while the various effects of the different mundane forces manifest themselves. They show neither attachment nor aversion to any of the effects, never longing for one or dreading another, accepting pleasure and pain with equal indifference, seeing gold to have no greater intrinsic value than ordinary stone, and looking with equal favor upon that which is near and dear and that which is repulsive. They do not hanker for flattery and praise, take no offense when criticized and defamed, love both allies and adversaries, and never endeavor for mundane success. Those who follow the sacred path of unalloyed divine service communing with me in transcendental love, are automatically freed from all mundane effects and are enabled to perceive the realm of pure divine consciousness, that everlasting zone of nectar which is the domain of supreme truth and infinite joy and which has its foundations in me. Hmm. So Krishna is saying that we, uh, when we come to this world, this material world, we are then encased, the soul is encased inside a material body. Mm. <clears throat> uh, that is this material energy. Mm. And when the soul comes into a material body, then it becomes covered. Mm. Um, because we're under the influence of the what Krishna calls the binding forces mm. of material nature. Mm. <clears throat> and there are three. There's three forces. Mm. The, the mode, it's called the modes or the... Um, the modes of material nature are goodness, passion, and ignorance. Mm. Um, so they are like tight ropes. They explain in the Bhagavad Gita that they're also called guna, G-U-N-A, guna. No, guna. Mm. A guna means a rope. Mm. So if you're tied by a rope, mm. tight, mm. you're not free, yes, isn't you're it? Not free. Mm. You're not in your natural condition yeah so that's the situation where the soul that comes to this material world he's because he's got this material body this mm. material body is um, 
not a spiritual body. Yeah. It's material. It's material. And yes. therefore, uh, it's inferior energy. Mm. The soul is spiritual. It's superior. But still, it can become uh, covered mm. by the material energy, mm. this material body. And covered means that <clears throat> you are under the influence mm. of these three binding forces or ropes. Mm. The tightest one, the heaviest one, is the mode of ignorance, darkness. Mm. Um, they give the, there's three examples. If you uh, if mm, just like a baby inside the mother's womb. It's very tight, mm. very dark. Yeah? Mm. <clears throat> so that is like compared to the mode of darkness, the mode of ignorance. It's called the mode of ignorance. Mm. If you're under the influence of that binding force, if you're tied by those ropes, that is the darkest condition. Mm. Mm. And what will happen, Krishna says, you'll see, a person that's very much under the influence of that mode of darkness he will sleep a lot, he will be very crazy, mm. he will take intoxication. Yeah? Yes. We can see. Why? Because he's under the influence of this very heavy uh, mm. mode, darkness. The next one up <clears throat> is called passion, mm. uh, which is not so heavy. It's an example given of just like a mirror. If you've got some dust on the mirror, mm. it's covering it. Yeah, mm. But it's not as heavy as the child in the womb. That's not as heavy. Yeah, yeah. So passion is a little bit not so heavy. Mm. And the passionate person is very busy. Yeah? Mm. He's making so many plans and he's working so hard to, to get money, mm. to buy things. And then he's very, he's, he's very attached to what he buys. Mm. Yeah? Mm. He buys the clothes and the sh nice car and uh, takes a nice holiday and this and that. He's very attached isn't it? He, mm. To what the money brings him. Mm. 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 He's very attached to that, you know. Um, if you say to him, look, I'll take your car now, I'm going to take your house now, he'll get very upset. Yeah. <laughs> because he's working so hard, mm. you know. Mm. So he's under that mode of passion. Mm. <clears throat> work, 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 work. He's got many, many desires, many material desires. Mm. Um, and there's no end to those desires. Mm. He'll work, 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 get something, buy something, and then he wants to buy something else. Mm. So it doesn't matter how much he buys and gets, he's not satisfied. Mm. That desire is called insatiable. Oh, insatiable. Insatiable means that you can never satisfy it. Mm. Mm. doesn't matter what you buy. Yes. It's never going to satisfy the soul. Mm. Mm. Because he's under the influence of this mode of passion, mm. the binding force. Also a rope, yeah? Mm. So that's not the natural thing of the soul. The natural desire of the soul is not to work and buy, work and buy. That's not the business of the soul. Mm. <clears throat> the, work, the natural business of the soul is to serve Krishna. Mm. So he's not in his natural <clears throat> situation. Mm. He's under the influence yeah, of this material mode of nature, passion. Mm. And then up above that, not so heavy, the best one is called the mode of goodness mm. or the harmonizing mode. And that one is compared to smoke mm. on a fire. Mm. It's, it's light, it's covering, but it's not so heavy as dust. It's dust. Oh, and it's yeah. not so heavy as the child in the womb. Mm. And if you're under influence of the mode of, it's called mode of goodness, mm. we can see that person is very peaceful, he's calm, he's not crazy, crazy, running, running to buy, buy, make money. Yeah. He's more, yeah? It's more calm. He likes to be in nature, go to the forest, by the beach. He's, mm. He doesn't want to be in the city, busy, busy. Mm. You can see, he's more harmony, yeah. So that's the best one of the three. But still, he, he's, he's attached to the happiness. You know, he likes to be calm and peaceful in the forest. Mm. He's attached to that. Mm. He's not attached to Krishna yet. Krishna. Mm. But be, you can, from the harmonizing mode of goodness, it's a better position to, to try to practice Krishna consciousness. Mm. If you're under the darkness, and you're drinking and you're sleeping. Wow, you are a long way from Krishna. It's yeah. very hard. Mm. You don't want to chant. You mm. don't want to hear. Yeah, he's much more covered. Yeah. The one in passion also. He's very, very busy. You, know, you come to me, 
You walk in the street, you want to give someone a flyer. Oh, excuse me, I'm, I haven't got time. You know, he'll say like that to you. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm done. I've got appointments, I'm busy. You can see the guy, yeah? yeah. He's busy, busy, busy guy. Yeah. So also, he's not very much inclined to hear about yeah, Krishna, yeah? yeah? Mm. Uh, but not so bad as the guy that's in the pub and completely yeah. drunk, yeah? yeah? So you can see the, the darkness, mm. the passion. Mm. But the third one, mm. the man, you know, you'll see him, perhaps you'll meet him on the beach, he's taking a walk, you know, he's, yeah. he's more calm. Yes. You give him a fly, oh, what's this, you know, he's more interested. He's more inter okay. So you can see that his consciousness mm. is more clear. It's more like that. So he's, he's in a better position mm. to accept Krishna, mm. like that. So that's why they say, you know, that um, <clears throat> to live in the city is the mode of passion, mm. but to live in the forest is the mode of goodness. Mm. You're in a better position for your consciousness yes. to, 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 to understand to about understand, Krishna. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So um, Krishna is describing in this chapter the influence of these different modes: yeah, mm. goodness, and darkness, passion, and goodness. And we're all under the influence to some extent, greater or yes. more. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Mm. But ultimately, we need to transcend. Mm. Transcend means that. I'm no longer under the influence of these things. Oh, this, yes. It's possible. Mm, mm. Uh, even though you're in the material body, mm. you, by practicing Krishna consciousness, you can no longer be influenced mm. by the material uh, binding forces. Oh, yes. It's possible. Mm. And that's very good, because then you're... As Krishna says, you're in a uh, transcendental position. Mm. Just like they give the example um, of a coconut. Mm. It's got the nut inside, but if the nut comes loose inside the coconut, mm. then it's, it's free. It's, it's not. Free. It's yeah, loose. Yeah. Mm. So the same thing, the soul mm. inside the body, yeah. if he gets transcendental, then even though he's in the body, mm. he's not, he's not attached, mm. he's, not, he's not affected. Yes. So <clears throat> that is what we need to work for, mm. especially now we've got this human form of life, is how to uh, become uh, transcendental, mm. Mm. unaffected mm. by the modes of darkness, passion and goodness. And, goodness. Mm. Um, and Krishna says in this last verse that because Arjuna asks, he says, Oh my dear most master, how may I come to ascertain which souls have overcome the influence of all the forces of mundane nature? Mm. What is the symptom? What is the characteristic of someone who has overcome the influence of the, the, the passion, the goodness, the darkness? What, how will he behave? What is his character like? Mm. Arjuna is asking Krishna, and Krishna replies, he says, the kind and gentle Lord then replied, Those who are fixed in transcendence sit as impartial observers while the various effects of the different mundane forces manifest themselves. They show neither attachment nor aversion to any of the effects, never longing for one or dreading another, accepting pleasure and pain with equal indifference, seeing gold to have no greater intrinsic value than ordinary stone, and looking with equal favor upon that which is near and dear and that which is repulsive. They do not hanker for flattery and praise, take no offense when criticized and defamed. They love both the allies and the adversaries and never endeavor for mundane success. Mm. So they're on the spiritual platform. Mm. Mm. Even though they're in this body, mm. they're not being affected by the material, the ropes, the ropes of illusion. Well, illusion. Mm. Because as, as long as you're affected by them, you're actually in illusion. Mm. Illusion meaning that you're still thinking on this body. Mm. As long as you're still thinking of this body, you're not, uh, you're not free. Mm. You're, you're being bound mm. by the ropes. Yeah? Mm. Mm. And, but for someone who's transcendental, he's no longer under the influence of the material modes of nature. Mm. He's different. It says here that... Uh, he, he's not looking for praise from anyone. Mm. He's not looking for people to, to tell them how wonderful he is. Mm. He, when they criticize him, he doesn't mind. Mm. Yeah? Uh, and 
he loves his enemies as well as his friends. Uh, <clears throat> and he doesn't try hard for mundane things. Mm. You know, big bank balance, big promotion. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. not interested in anything material. Mm. So he is in a very different consciousness mm. from an ordinary man. Mm. Why is that? Because he's realized that I'm not this body. Mm. My happiness doesn't come from material things. Mm. My happiness comes from spiritual, spiritual. from Krishna, mm. from service to Krishna. So he's not interested, therefore, in anything material. Mm. And he doesn't get upset either. Mm. When you criticize anything about him, it's material. I'm mm. not this body, you see. Mm. And then Krishna says also in the last verse, those who follow the, the sacred path of unalloyed divine service, communing with me in transcendental love, are automatically freed from all mundane effects and are enabled to perceive the realm of pure divine consciousness, that everlasting zone of nectar, which is the domain of supreme truth and infinite joy, and which has its foundations in me. So Krishna is saying that if we take up this path of bhakti, mm. we practice chanting the holy names, we read Bhagavad Gita, we discuss Krishna topics like that, we try to make our life centered around Krishna, mm. how to please Krishna. This mm. is bhakti, yeah? Mm. Uh, most, most people, their life is about either I'm going to just please myself mm. or maybe I'll please my family yes. uh, or work hard for my boss, yeah? They're not, they're trying to please different people and but they're not trying to please Krishna, mm. yeah? Mm. But the life of devotion and bhakti is not like that. Mm. The life of devotion is that I just want to please Krishna. Mm. That is my business because I'm the servant of Krishna. Mm. I'm not the servant of Woolworths yes. or uh, <clears throat> my mother or my father. No. Yes. That is a temporary thing. Mm. Mm. It'll last for five minutes or for 50 years, isn't it? Mm. You'll be employed here or there. You'll have this father and that mother. Yes. But it is temporary. It, yeah, it is not an eternal relationship. Mm. So therefore... It is not your real identity. Mm. Your real identity lasts forever. Mm. What is that? I am the eternal servant of Krishna. So if you're thinking, no, I'm an employee of Woolworths, or mm. I'm in this family, or that tribe, or this community, that is a body thing. Yes. It's not to do with the soul. Yeah, it's not so it, it is not to do with you, mm. the real you. Mm. And that means illusion. It's a kind of madness, a kind of... Insanity. Mm. So, how to get free of the madness? Mm. How can a madman be happy? Mm. He's not going to be happy. He thinks he is. That's the thing. That's the problem. Yeah. He <laughs> thinks he's happy. He's happy yeah. And that he's get, if he's not happy, he'll find happiness. Mm. Yeah, next week, next month, next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, my happiness. Yeah. yeah. I just need a promotion. Mm. Or I just need this and I just need that. But it never comes. Mm. Because the problems are not getting solved. Mm. Mm. So, uh, to be happy, one has to get free of that madness mm. and start realizing that, what is my business? Mm. Who am I? Mm. I'm a servant of Krishna. Um, so, to be happy means to try to please Krishna, yes. keep him in the center, mm. like that. And that's called bhakti or devotion. Mm. So, the, a devotee is someone that... He's devoting his whole life. His whole life. Oh. Yeah, he's not part time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Do with fifty percent Krishna consciousness and fifty percent nonsense. No, yeah. devote. Devote means complete focus yeah? mm. Mm. of all my time, all my energy, everything. No, it's, it is logical mm. because I am Krishna's servant. Mm. That's my identity. That's a fact. That's a scientific fact, spiritual mm. fact. Mm. So how can you change that? You can't change you that. Can't change Better to understand it, better to realize it, mm. then you're a normal person, mm. <laughs> a sane person, a happy person. But someone who doesn't mm. acknowledge that, doesn't recognize that, yeah. doesn't understand that, he's a crazy man. Mm. He doesn't know what's what. And he can't be happy. Mm. Mm. So Krishna says that those who do try to follow this path of bhakti devotion, mm. what happens with them? They automatically... Krishna says, automatically the influence of the material energy, this mm. goodness, this passion, the darkness, automatically they're not affected. Mm. They're not affected. Mm. Um, 
Just like when we go to sleep, that is the mode of darkness mm. affecting you. Mm. You become covered, yeah? You're sitting there at your desk, the next thing, <laughs> yeah? yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you? What's happening there? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the mode, the, it's the influence of the mode of darkness. Mm. Ignorance. Mm. We start dreaming all nonsense. Yeah. It's yeah. ignorance, isn't it? Yeah. You're thinking I'm flying in the sky, <laughs> I'm in the airplane, and I'm a big uh, pop star, whatever. It's ignorance. It's not true. Mm. All those dreams, it's yeah. not true. Mm. So that is the influence of darkness. Mm. Someone is falling asleep. Mm. Yeah. But I was reading just the other day, there was a great saint, a lady, mm. who lived uh, <clears throat> some hundreds of years ago in India. Mm. Um, her name was uh, Ganga Mati, mm. Ganga Mata Goswami. She was a great saint. Yeah. She was also a princess, but then she became very much interested in Krishna. She didn't want any of the wealth and money and power, nothing. Oh, okay. yeah. So she gave her life like, a, like, a, like, like the nuns, you know, mm. oh, to Krishna, 100%. But she was a big, big saint, mm. and she was all day long chanting the holy names of Krishna, giving lectures, yeah? mm. but it was saying in this book, and she would get food, she would just go to, it's called Madikari, they go around, they ask for a little bit of rice, a little bit something, bread. Oh, yes. Yeah, she would eat like tiny pieces of bread, they want to give her lots of food, but she said, no, no, <clears throat> mm. I just want a little bit something. Oh, but you're a big, big saint. Let us give you lovely chapatis and rice and mm. dal and sweets. No, no, just give me a little bit of bread. Little bit of so she was very renounced, you know, very austere. But the thing was, she didn't sleep. Mm. Yeah. Why? Because she's on that transcendental platform. Darkness, ignorance doesn't affect you. Mm. The sleeping business is darkness, ignorance. Yeah? yeah. But once you're up there on the high platform, mm. You're staying awake all the time, mm. serving Krishna. It's amazing, isn't it? Sure. No sleeping. Hmm. So, this means that you, be, even though you're in this body, mm. you can become transcendental. You can't imitate it, you can't pretend. Yeah. yeah. But it is, it is something that will happen, as Krishna says, that if you practice this bhakti, this devotion, mm. automatically, automatically you become... Transcendental, you're no longer affected by these modes mm. because they are actually covering you, they are bringing yes. you down your consciousness. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And then Krishna goes to, on further and says that in the very, very advanced stage, you can actually see Krishna and the spiritual world 24 mm. 7, mm. even though you're here in this material world. This is spiritual vision. Spiritual vision, you know, mm. this is very, very high thing to try and understand. Uh, but we should believe it, you know, we should believe it that even now there are great saints who walk in this world. Um, they look like you and me, they may be walking and talking, but their consciousness is completely different. Mm. It's explained in the, some famous prayers by one of uh, the great. Uh, Mahajana is one of the great devotees of the Lord, called mm. Br the Lord Brahma. Mm. Premanjana Charita Bhakti Velochanina, that somebody whose eyes are covered with the ointment of love mm. for Krishna, mm. because he's got love in his heart for Krishna, pure love, he can see Krishna 24 7, mm. like a TV mm. in his heart all the time, even though he's walking and talking here. Yeah? Mm, mm, mm. So this is very high, very high. Yeah? Um, but we should uh, we should understand that this is this is the way to go. You know, mm. this is the way to go. That uh, it may seem very far away and impossible for me. Yes, I'm just an ordinary, mm. ordinary person, nonsense person. Mm. <laughs> but. Um, Anything's possible. Anything's mm. possible by the grace of the Guru, you know. Um, just like I was thinking today, one time, Lord Goranga, just 500 years ago when he was here, mm. 
he had one great devotee called Srivas, and they were in his house. They would every night, mm. they would chant and dance Hare Krishna. And one night, this Srivas had a child, a boy, and that boy died mm. that night. He mm. died. Mm. But they didn't want to tell Lord Gauranga, they didn't want to disturb him because he's chanting and dancing, you know. But anyway, he, he heard, oh, what happened? Your boy, he died tonight. What happened? Oh, yeah, we didn't want to disturb you, my Lord. Mm. So then Lord Gauranga went to that child and he brought him back to life. Mm. He brought him back from the dead. Yeah? And the child began to speak and this and that. And then he left again. Mm. So um, the Lord can do anything. He can do anything, you know. There's nothing impossible for him mm. and for his purity. Yes. Uh, we can see even in the life of Jesus, mm. he himself rose from the dead. Yeah? Mm. So when we hear these descriptions that, yes, you know, if your eyes become covered with love for Krishna, you can see Krishna 24-7. Yes. Why should you not believe that? Yeah? Yeah. By the grace of Guru, it mm. can happen. Mm. They can give you that gift. It doesn't come from anywhere else. You can't make it happen yourself. Yes, yes. But they can make it happen, just like old Garanga. He took that child who was, had no life mm. and he brought him back to life. Sure. No problem. Mm. No easy thing. <laughs> so we should believe, you know, that whatever's happening, the Lord is in charge, is yes. in control. Mm. Um, and He can do anything. Anything, yes. There's nothing He cannot do, you know. So that means that we need to increase our faith. Mm. And know and feel that whatever is going on, whatever is happening, uh, Krishna is in control. Mm. And, and provided I try to surrender to Him, you know, and I'm always trying to think about Him and serve Him, uh, then He gives special attention, special help. Yeah? Mm. He loves everybody, mm. but the one that specially comes to Him, He gives special favor. Isn't it? The child... Like the mother, she loves all the children she's mm. got. But there's one child that always wants to come to the mother. Mm. She's going to be more special with that child, am I right? Mm. More blessings. It's natural. Same thing with Krishna. He's not saying to some souls, get away. Get a, yeah. No. Mm. Everyone, yeah, all his children, mm. all his, uh, he loves them all. But the ones that say, my Lord, what can I do for you? Mm. All day long, mm. you know, the other ones are saying, give me, give me, give me. But yeah. one child says, no, 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 what can I give you? Yes. He's more pleased. Mm. He's more pleased by that, you know. Mm. So we should make, try to cultivate that attitude that what can I do for you, my Lord? Mm. Um, and Krishna responds, reciprocates like that. So if our faith grows, you know, that um, I may think I've got so many problems, my mm. problem in my heart, I'm sad about this, I'm sad about that, or uh, I'm frustrated about uh, work situation, mm. health situation, relationship, money. So many situations. Yeah, eh? so many. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who's your friend? Mm. Who's your friend? Eh? Mm. Who's your real friend? Who's your full-time friend? Mm. Not a five-minute friend. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, no friend. <laughs> Not that kind of friend. Yeah. Who's your full-time friend? Mm. Eh? Mm. Only Krishna. The more you cry, <clears throat> and you cry to Krishna. Eh? Mm. No problems. Eh? He listens. He listens. Um, so that's the thing, we need to get that habit, yes. that I'm crying to Krishna. I'm not going to this one and that one and this one. Yeah, yes. I've given up on them. Mm. <laughs> uh, they are just ordinary people, ordinary souls. Krishna is not ordinary. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and he's my friend. Yeah. yeah. Like that. So um, this type of attitude we should cultivate, because there's lots of things happening every day. Yeah, it's a lot. We're on a journey, and a this happens, that happens, yeah, unexpected yeah. things. Mm, mm. And who's there all the time? All the time. Somebody's there some of the time. Mm. This one's there some of the time. That one's there some of the time. time. But who's there all the time? Mm. Mm. Through all the situations, up and down, unexpected, difficult things. Only Krishna. Only, yes. Only Krishna. That we have to become so confident mm. and convinced, you know? that we have no doubt. We yes. need to come to the point where there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent faith. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And beyond that, love even. 
this is the journey. This is the journey that we're on, you know, to have to change the heart mm. from being against Krishna mm. to being a hard heart to being in favor of Krishna, a soft heart, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a journey yes. of the heart under the guidance of the, the Guru and Krishna. They're the ones that can make that heart change. Mm -hmm. It needs to change. Yeah. The reason we've got difficulties is because of that heart. Mm. It's a hard heart. It's a heart that's against Krishna. Yes. That's a very serious disease. <laughs> Who can change that? Only they can change Only that. They, yeah. No psychologist, no pill, nothing. Yes, nothing. <laughs> How's it go? <laughs> no pills, no bills, just miracles. Mm. So we can hear a little bit from Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Actually, just the same thing what I was talking about. This is an article, Bhagavad Gita is meant for giving the real cure. This conversation between His Divine Grace Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and social worker Ashok Chugani took place in Mumbai, India on January 8, 1977. Mr. Chugani, I feel that your movement is doing very valuable work here in India. Perhaps you know of our success also. We are making arrangements for many villages in the outlying areas around Bombay to receive greatly needed eye operations. We have facilities for 5,200 patients. Mm. Srila Prabhupada, we are following Bhagavad Gita as it is. Bhagavad Gita doesn't teach that you help the people by taking care of their eyes. Krishna does not give us any such philosophy in Bhagavad Gita. That is your own idea. But we are applying Bhagavad Gita as it is. That is the difference between your work and ours. Our program is, instead of giving relief only to the eyes, we give people real relief. If you give a man Krishna consciousness, he won't have to take another birth in this material world. That means no more material bodies, no more eyes, no more disease. This is real relief from suffering. Somebody's taking care of the eyes, somebody's taking care of the stomach, somebody the teeth, somebody something else, on and on. But this will not solve the problem. The real problem, Bhagavad Gita says, is Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadi. Birth, death, old age and disease. Because you took birth, you have these eyes, so you're bound to have eye disease. Birth, death, old age and disease. Because you have accepted birth, you must accept old age, disease and death. Hospitals may give some temporary relief, but that is not the solution. The solution is to stop birth, death, old age and disease. If you are able to give that solution, then there will be no more eye trouble, ever. Suppose a diseased man goes to a doctor for treatment. His symptoms are sometimes headache, sometimes eye ache, sometimes stomach ache. Now, if the doctor gives medicine only for the symptoms, is that the cure? No. This man has a disease, and if you cure the disease, the symptoms will be cured automatically. Similarly, everyone within the material world is suffering from repeated birth and death. But Bhagavad Gita is meant for giving the real cure. How not to take another birth in the material world? Krishna's advice in the Bhagavad Gita is that we tolerate this temporary suffering. Just as your body is not permanent, so your diseases are also not permanent. You should tolerate the temporary suffering and solve the real problem. You must stop your repetition of birth and death. But people do not know that birth and death can be stopped, so they are simply busy with the temporary problems. The Gita explains how, on leaving his body at the time of death, one can go back home, back to Godhead. Chaktva deham punar janma naiti mam at. <clears throat> no more birth in the material world. That is the real cure for all suffering. Mr. Chugani, what about the problem of starvation? We are working to solve. Srila Prabhupada, starvation? This is not a problem. The Vedas say Nitya Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Ekubahanam Yovidati Kaman. God is perfectly providing food for all living beings. If someone is not getting any food, that is a blessing. 
It is God's arrangement to correct him. Suppose a child is diseased and his father does not give him any food to eat. That is not starvation. It is his father's blessing. It is the cure. Why should the child complain? The so-called starvation problem is just a mental concoction, but we don't concoct anything. We get our knowledge from the scriptures. Tate nukampam susumikshamano bunjan evatmakritam vipakam If a devotee of the Lord is starving, he doesn't complain. He takes it as God's blessing. I did something wrong, so God has put me into this difficulty. It is his blessing. This is our view. This is scripture. People often ask this question. How can God be unkind to some people and kind to others? It's unjust. But this is foolishness. God is not unjust. God is good. But people do not understand God. Because you are unintelligent. When you see that people are starving, you say that God is not good. But the fact is that you are not good. <laughs> Each man's suffering is simply his own fault. So a devotee takes suffering as Krishna's blessing, and because a devotee is thinking like that, his liberation is guaranteed. Mukti Pade Sadayabhak, Mr. Chugani. The ways of God in the world are difficult for us to understand. They do seem unjust, Srila Prabhupada. Actually, you don't believe in God, and this godlessness is the real problem. You only believe in God if God is your servant, an order supplier. God, if you don't help me, I won't serve you. People think of God as their servant and order supplier. One of my god brothers from Germany told me that in the Second World War, when the, when the men of Germany went to fight, all the women were left at home. So they went to the church and prayed to God that their husbands, their fathers and their sons would return home. But none of them returned home, and the people all became atheists. Ah, it is useless to go to the church. I prayed so much for my husband, but he did not come. It is useless. So this is their understanding of God. When the war was declared, they didn't consult God. But when their husband is going to die, then they petition God. They order God to make their husbands return from the war unharmed. God did not bring him back. He did not carry out my order, so God is unjust. We are not interested in God. And this is the attitude here also. When people act sinfully, God is never consulted. But when they suffer, then they cry to God. And if He doesn't supply their order, they become atheists. God is unjust, they say. This is their rascaldom. Hmm. Yeah, so you know, We have to understand, we are servant of God. Mm. He's not my servant. Mm. God give me this, God give me that. Yeah. Yeah. He's not my servant. Mm. Um, and also my difficulties are not his fault. Mm. He didn't make the trouble. Mm. I made the trouble mm. myself. Mm. This is a big one to understand. Very important to know that. God is not responsible for my difficulties, mm. Krishna. Yes. I am responsible. So you may be starving, mm. yeah? you may be crippled, you may be uh, poor, so many difficulties. Yeah? But I have to understand, it's because of my misdeeds mm. in previous life. It's called my karma. I'm not getting the reaction. It is not God that's causing the difficulty. Uh, so you can't hold him responsible. Mm. Um, it's necessary to think like that, you know, that it will not help you to think that God is being unkind to me. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's not a fact. You have not made good choices in your previous lives, Life, yes. so now you're getting some reaction, mm. Mm. karma. <clears throat> um, the best thing you can do is to accept that, Instead of blaming God, blaming this one, blaming that one. Mm. No, it's because of my own doing. The soul in previous lives has done some misdeed. Mm. Now there's some reaction, some punishment. Um, so the best thing I can do is to surrender to Krishna. Mm. Because in the 18th chapter, Krishna says, uh, Sarvadaman parichaja 
Mame kam sharanam raja aham tam sabapa pebyo moksha yishami maashu chaha. Giving up all other conceptions of religious laws and duties, just surrender to me. I will protect you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. This is Krishna's instruction. So he's saying, give up all your other ideas of religion. Mm. Just surrender to me, Krishna. Mm. And what will I do? I will protect you mm. from all the sinful reaction. So we, we've done a lot of bad things. Mm. There should be punishment coming. Mm. But... Krishna can wipe the slate clean. He can say, all right, you're excused. Mm. You don't have to suffer mm. what you're meant to suffer. Mm. He can wipe the slate clean. Only Krishna can do that. Mm. Uh, and he says, do that, surrender to me, and then you do not have to suffer mm. the reaction of your past misdeeds. Mm. Mm. I will... Uh, do not fear, he says, like that. Mm. But if you do not surrender, then... The reactions will come. Mm. So many troubles from your past misdeeds. For every action, there is a reaction like that. Mm. So we are responsible. We are responsible. But to escape that so much punishment and so much suffering, we can escape only by surrendering to Krishna. Mm. Um, you know, just like the the, the 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 heavy prisoners. You know, the guys that get the the long-term prison sentence, yeah? Yeah. lifetime, uh, they get the life sentence, lifetime, mm. sometimes they get multiple life sentences, mm. Yeah? Mm. Mm. no chance, no mm. chance of mm. getting out, mm. that's our position also, we've done so much nonsense, mm. um, we've got a very, very heavy sentence, we have this material wealth, so there's no chance of getting out, but just like, if the governor comes to the prison and says, all right, I'm setting you free, mm. even though you're 10th class criminal, yeah. <laughs> but I'm setting you free, setting free. then you're free, Mm. But there's no other way mm. to get free. Yes. Same thing. Only Krishna can uh, excuse us mm. and say, all right, you've done big, big, big nonsense, mm. but now surrender to me and I'll reform you. Mm. Not like sometimes here we read the guy is in the prison and then he's in the prison for 30 years and then they let him out and five days later he's doing the same, same thing, thing, committing yeah. multiple murders. Yeah. Don't we read yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's no change in his heart mm. after 30 years in the prison. Yeah? What good is that? Mm. Krishna says, no, no, I will reform you. Mm. Not just a uh, superficial thing. Mm. You will, I will change your heart so that you actually become a, a saintly person, mm. a person who wants to serve the Lord, mm. who gives up his bad habits. Mm. Mm. I will change your heart like that. Mm. Krishna can do that. Yes. And then there's no chance of your going back mm. to the old ways and no chance of coming back to this material world. So, wonderful solution. Mm. Surrender to Krishna. Mm -hmm.